Hi, good evening. It's uh, Thinking Slow Partnership. Uh, we have a reasonably uh, interesting video, I think, to show you. Uh, and we've called it Welcome to G Digital Hell. Um, that's not really just to grab attention. Um, we actually think that we will uh, describe for you what digital hell actually looks like. And of course, you can decide for yourselves whether that um, description is, is accurate or not. So this presentation, we will basically go through a existing patent from uh, Microsoft Corporation for a system of task allocation and reward of people, uh, users, which is this little person in the corner, number 145. So before getting into that, we want to set a little bit the um, background for this for this system and where we are today. And uh, anyone that's followed us for any length of time will know uh, that we have been big proponents uh, of the Great Reset being the real explanation behind all of these strange uh, supposedly public health measures that we've been seeing, particularly lockdown. Uh, we've always more or less always maintained that this is really a major political agenda and that COVID has always been a smokescreen and, and, and that theory we sort of sketched out very early in 2020 and over time, you know, we, I think it's been proved to be more or less accurate. Now, for the Toby Youngs of this world that say, oh, that's just a silly conspiracy theory. Well, it's actually a book on 280 pages written by Klaus Schwab and Thierry Mallory. And all we do is quote from that book. You know, these are not things we invent. This is an existing uh, document that we just take, uh, not more or less at face value, but we understand that there, this proves there's an interest group uh, that exists with, with this agenda. So it's kind of ridiculous to say this is a conspiracy theory quoting from a book which is called COVID-19, The Great Reset. Um, so here is, I think, one of the more important paragraphs that we've highlighted before, but actually most of the book is around this kind of similar theme. So the opening part of uh, this paragraph is that the uh, physical and social distancing should persist after the pandemic. So in in plain English, that's basically permanent lockdown. Uh, you know, when the COVID smokescreen finally runs out of steam as, as a reason for lockdown, then we should continue with that anyway. Now, interestingly, one of the reasons that we should continue with that is because of the lasting fear uh, from people of being infected. Uh, now, where did that fear come from? Well, lo and behold, up at the top of here is the quote from uh, Herr Professor Schwab, you know, we are in the midst of the most severe crisis experience since World War II, said Professor Schwab, except we know that that's not true. Uh, we know that the 1957 pandemic and the 1968 pandemic will have resulted in a greater uh, loss of life in terms of years of life lost. So this is not a true statement. It was an uh, exaggeration and it's part of the fear campaign that's been deliberately created. Um, and then, of course, he used that fear as the excuse for implementing the lockdown that you sort of wanted anyway as part of your Great Reset agenda. Uh, this is problem, reaction, solution um, in, in, in plain sight, basically. So uh, just to give one number, this chart here shows the number of deaths per 100,000 of population uh, age adjusted over time. And as you can see, 2020, okay, there was, there was a, a small uh, uptick compared to prior years. But if you look at any kind of perspective and any time of time scale, like this, this charts from 1960, you'll see 2020 is not in any way dangerous. Uh, it's not uh, the, the, the numbers of death per 100,000 of population. I mean, it's very low on a long term historical basis, of course, a tragedy for the individuals involved. But on a historic perspective, 2020 does not represent uh, the most severe crisis since World War II. 
uh, and of course to obscure this fact uh, we're flooded with death porn uh, through the compliant media and that that is the point of the psyops is to make sure you never do get perspective it's just endless literally now one and a half years you cannot open a newspaper turn a radio on uh, look at the television without COVID uh, being thrust at you as a never-ending crisis. So anyway, where does that get us? That gets us to this system. Uh, this system is from a patent that um, uh, surprisingly or not surprisingly was published in uh, March 2020, almost exactly when the lockdowns came into play. And this describes a system of allocating tasks to users who uh, are essentially isolated and sitting on their own. Now, the first um, important question is, well, who tells you, let's say you, you are the user number 145 in this diagram, the little chap at the bottom, who tells you what to do? Well, the computer tells you what to do, which is already kind of interesting. And that is, uh, the, the server number 110 sends a message, uh, which is a task, which goes to the user's device, which is, let's say, a laptop or a desktop that the user has, which is this 130. Uh, the, the device then is uh, in communication with a sensor, uh, which is number 140. Uh, and the sensor is monitoring the user's uh, bodily functions um, and I've given you a list here of what's going to be monitored. Uh, here's just an example, radiant heat, pulse rate, and brain waves. And they actually go through a list of brain waves that will be monitored or could be monitored, uh, going through the whole list, uh, gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. And they also describe uh, what those uh, brain waves are associated with, you know, different types of thinking, emotion, deep thinking, shallow thinking. So it has a pretty good idea of what sort of things they're going to be monitoring. Now, if you have performed the task um, in the way it was assigned um, and the readings from the sensor are in line with what the system expects, then you will basically be, be given uh, or awarded a cryptocurrency um, unit. So now, um, to me, you're talking about a system where there's essentially no human interaction and no human activity. You neither see the person that gives you tasks, that there's no discussion, feedback, and you don't really know who's paying you. Uh, it's all done through the computer, and you are the sort of isolated uh, chap at the bottom number 145 now you know i understand that unfortunately a lot of um uh, let's say not so exciting tasks already on this on this pathway so driving vans presumably routes deliveries all allocated by computer and the computer is monitoring what's going on through 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 various um monitoring equipment in the van so this is sort of to some extent an unfortunate reality of today but i think when i'm looking at this going forward um where this is going to put most of us so for the for the white collar people who have been quite comfortable in lockdown uh sitting in their gardens doing zoom calls this is what's next for you guys uh because this looks pretty bad and uh, I personally am prepared to call this digital hell. Um, I think where this is going is is not good. Basically, I think not many people are aware that these systems are, um, let's say, being thought about and being patented and it eventually will be rolled out unless we say this is not a, a, a good way to go forward. So again, this is a question of sort of efficiency versus humanity uh and uh something that we should be aware of now um just to prove that this isn't a conspiracy theory here is the uh, screen capture of the actual patent from microsoft technology licensing llc um, and it's got this kind of uh, quirky number 060606 uh, which i won't comment on but this is a screen grab of the uh, of the patent, um, and this is not something I'm making up. You can read the text 
I think the more you read, the worse it gets, to be honest. I've given you a very short summary in that table, but you can you can look this up um, through a Google search and you'll find it. Um, and then just to sort of uh, address the issue, hey, you know, there's all kinds of patents filed all the time. Most of them never come to fruition. And, you know, what's the big deal? This could just be theory that never gets implemented. And I just wanted to, you know, as well as highlighting the bit at the beginning on, on the Great Reset, that they actually envisaging a, a, a permanent situation where humans are isolated, which plays in exactly to this uh, cryptocurrency task and reward system. There's actually even behind, well be before the Great Reset came, came to light, uh, there are books and papers from some of the very, very important globalists and Mr. Brzezinski um, is really one of the founding fathers of this uh, uh, globalism movement. He's really front and center in all of this. And he wrote a very important paper, a seminal paper in 1971, uh, the Te Technotronic Era. And I'm just gonna read you uh, the middle section of this paragraph that I found. Um, Unhindered by the restraints of traditional liberal values, this elite would not hesitate to achieve its political ends by using the latest modern techniques for influencing public behavior and keeping society under close surveillance and control. So he's envisaged back then kind of the situation we're more or less in now. And it does tend to be the case that in certain situations the uh these important people in the elite will issue a warning uh which uh, that warning is actually something that they want to happen so I, I can't vouch for that in this case but let's say it's been envisaged as a possible outcome of an elite having control of technology you know that can technology can be used to control people and I, I, I think for many reasons, that is what we are seeing. And I think that patent that I showed you is really a highlight of what the world of work for the white collar folk uh, might look like once this system of control is implemented. So again, I, I'm prepared to say for me, that's a hellish prospect, just being, you know, seeing something come up on a screen uh, I don't have the autonomy even to decide whether I'm going to do it or not. I've got something wearing something or implanted something inside me telling the computer, am I doing it or not? Um, now, it doesn't take a sort of giant leap of faith from um, from having that and getting your crypto uh, currency paid to, you know, the next question is, what if I don't do it? You know, is there a stick associated with this fantastic system? Very possibly. Um, and I think the other important thing about the awarding of the cryptocurrency, as we just saw a couple of weeks ago, the Bank of England coming out saying we can actually program the cryptocurrency to make sure it's only spent on approved purchases. So, I mean, we really are talking about um, this is a feudal system. I mean, there's just no other way around this, essentially. You know, you have no autonomy. You really are user number 145. Your task is assigned, your performance is monitored, and you're paid in something that most probably you can only spend on approved purchases. I mean, this is why, again, the title is uh, Digital Hell. I really, I really see this as a digital hell. Now, the people that design these things uh, will see this as, you know, super fantastic efficiency but it's extremely anti-human. And I just wanted to today uh, make sure everyone knows about this patent. We're not the first to find it. I think I've seen it floating around, but we thought it was worthwhile to make this video. Um, and then before signing off, we wanted to highlight some of the other really, uh, we think important and uh, without being too, um, uh, too puffed up, important and high quality, videos. One, uh, we, we've had to put some of these on Rumble because we've had trouble with YouTube already. One of them is forced vaccination. I think that's a very important video because again, it goes to the issue of people will have no autonomy in the system. And we actually focus on, on some specific wording that the government on the basis of national interest will decide 
whether you're vaccinated or not. Um, that's quite a jaw dropping concept. So, you know, do try and have a look at that. Uh, another very important one, probably more important, to be honest, is the interview with Professor Bakhti, which is the follow up where we focus in only on the issue of pregnancy and fertility. And we go through the data from Japan about the concentration of lipids in the ovaries. Definitely have a look at that. And, you know, his key call to action there is like, look at it, read about it, think about it before you do it you know really he uh, and and I've, I've found that people who are telling the truth will actually encourage others to look for themselves this is not instructions that we get from the government just get the jab this is please look and think for yourselves and read about it um and the third so and then just a closing word about us why we're doing this and what we're here for uh, we identified very early on uh, based on the data coming in from diamond princess that Professor Neil Ferguson's uh, unmitigated pandemic figure of 510,000 was a lie. Um, and in actual fact, the whole concept of an unmitigated pandemic where nobody responds, uh, no one takes any autonomous action, is a work of complete fiction. And its only purpose was to create fear, which it did, and to put him and his friends in charge of the ludicrous destructive policy response that they then implemented um, and we found that pretty offensive and from now more than a year now we've been pu pushing out evidence-based analysis uh, showing that what the government is doing is destructive it doesn't make sense it's a political agenda it is the great reset and it is orchestrated by uh, certainly an interest group which who are the global oligarchs there's just no way that that's uh, not you know that, that that's not a possibility because if you spend long enough digging through who said what when you know the patterns are there regardless of what Toby Young or anyone else tells you it's kind of there if you look for it accepting of course that you can always be wrong due to con to confirmation bias and other things but there's just more or less and i wouldn't say overwhelming but a very strong body of evidence that this is a political project organized by a group of anti-human oligarchs um, centered around world economic forum trilateral commission club of rome and other various sort of um forum which they use to d discuss uh, policy objectives that they have so that's us and we're going to keep doing this we're censored on twitter our, our materials deleted from youtube um, our website's been taken down but we keep sort of chipping away at this and i think it's obvious that more and more people are waking up to this i think soon we'll go on to um more concrete actions um on the front foot and i think the the whole line of um uh, questioning along malfeasance and malpractice in public office is a very promising line uh, and we we're happy to help and work with anyone that wants to pursue that line so just as a conclusion we hope this was interesting um, and as we always say at the end of every video do not stay safe but stay free staying free is the only way you're going to stay safe thank you very much for listening good evening and goodbye